Hello, hello. Let me uh, talk about Legends of Vancouver by E. Pauline Johnson. It is a 1911 work uh, by a Mohawk uh, Mohawk writer uh, from Canada. Uh, her father was her father was uh, Mohawk as well. Her mother was English. Uh, she was famous as in her time as a poet and someone who kind of performed performed her work uh, on stage as. Uh, as Tuck, oh, okay, Dag, Dagawagam, Dagawagam, which literally, I guess, means double life or double wampum. Uh, she, um, she was born in 1861 and died in uh, 1913 at the age of 50 from, uh, from breast cancer. Uh, yeah, she was born on the Six Nation, Six Nation Reserve in Ontario and died in Vancouver. Uh, Legends of the Vancouver, which actually she wanted to call Legends of Capilano, apparently, uh, is a series of uh, legends that were mostly, most of them were told to her by uh, Chief Joe Capilano, or uh, Sapulak, um, who, who they met. Uh, significantly, and it's mentioned in her introduction, uh, in a uh, delegation, he was doing a delegation to King Edward VII in 1906. Now, what the book doesn't say is that he was doing a delegation, he was, he and other chiefs were doing a delegation to the king to directly appeal to him to get Canada to honor its treaty promises uh, and to uh, lift uh, the ban on potlatch amongst, amongst other things. Um, and um, indeed, this kind of the political, the political uh, thread of this is what I think I find most striking about these legends, uh, that they that that um, they have a tendency to stress uh, the uh, the native 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 way of life. Uh, they, the, their, indeed, potlatch comes up as one of these unifying uh, features of their religious and political political life of uh, Native peoples. I will not try and describe it because I am an ignorant white guy, but um, worth worth going into itself and how this was outlawed as one of the kind of main uh, one of the one of the main uh, one of the main uh, colonial acts of the time. The others being stuff like uh, the uh, residential schools and uh, such and such like uh, other really horribly discriminative uh, discriminatory practices. Um, but the, the, the thing about these stories, which were all published in uh, the province uh, newspaper, which is still going, still goes today in its, in, the, in its form today, uh, was that these were stories that um, were consumed by uh, not just native people, but probably by more of a, of a white leader of white readership. Uh, but I was struck by just exactly how uh, politically savvy these stories are of putting forward what I kind of are essentially um, tools to survival, tools of we uh, how much um, these Native people are like, we're willing to sacrifice ourselves for our children. Uh, there's many stories in here where, uh, uh, one story where the father has to go swimming, ritualistically swimming uh, in the Straits, in Georgia Strait, uh, to cleanse to uh, cleanse himself uh, um keep himself clean for the birth of his child. And uh, the uh, four representatives of the, of the great deity try and push him out, but he's like, no, no, I won't do this. I am doing this for my child. This this ritual cl cleanliness is so important for his future, for his or her future. And uh, that, that and you know, they honor, in the end, the, the deities honor him and turn him into a great, uh, great pillar. I think that's, that, that might, that might be, the story Siwash Rock. I'm gonna have. You'll have to. I do believe that is that Siwash Rock. That he is this rock for his child. And there is this kind of sense throughout the thing of how much um, the the uh, the peoples in the story are here to preserve uh, what's under threat. And it's one of these things that's unspoken is of the time of this is a time when residential schools were 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 running uh, later. In the 60s, we get stuff like um, 
state basically sanctioned uh, sc scooping up sco the great 60s scoop of scooping native children away from their families. Uh, this is always unfortunately been a tool of uh, Canadian government, Canadian society to try and break down these people. And these a lot of these stories seem to kind of answer that uh, in an unspoken way that um, I could see kind of going over the head and these these being just being like presented as beautiful, lyric, uh, romantic stories of, of native peoples. But unlike some stories that I have read where it's just like, oh, the, the lost, the lost native people, they've somehow for some reason disappeared, probably because they just weren't made for the modern world. Uh, the underlying white supremacist thing being they're going to die out because we're going to kill them all out. They're going to, we're going to drive them and there's no place for them here anymore. They have to assimilate into, into us. It's like, no, this story is very much more about we're still here we're still alive and these are resistance stories for it. Um, I think um, because, you know, I'm a, Can I'm a Canadian, I've heard of Pauline Johnson and I, I just sort of heard it's like, oh yeah, yeah, she's one of those kind of the, the, the old, oldy time uh, Canadian authors. Indeed, she's uh, credited being part of the movement that started to define what Canadian literature was going to develop was going to develop into, but I'm just really struck by how how this is very much a story where um, yeah there is kind of a bit of um, that sort of sentimentality uh, in her writing, um, but the, underneath that there is sort of there's a, there's sort of a bedrock here of we're going to survive we are going to fight through this stuff we are the here are here are the tools to keep going. Uh, in these stories, which I was, I was surprised, I was surprised to find there, surprised and delighted to find there, there was a uh, thing, um, you know, it starts, it starts out with um, Pauline Johnson talking about uh, meeting uh, Joe Capilano with, with, Ed, with, with Edward VII, and it ends with a story, which isn't a legend, is a uh, recounting of um, a, a royal, royal Mohawk chief, where one of the royals, a young uh, Arthur, I believe it is, in like 1869 comes and is made an Iroquois chief, which is like, it's also, it's like, suddenly we've gone from Vancouver and this last story where, where the Iroquois were, were all the way across, were, were, all, were all the way across the, the country. But, um, and it's like, it's slightly puzzling until you go like, no, this is nation to nation, face to face. We have to, uh, you need to honor you need to honor us as a nation, uh, and uh, that's that that that's it's a kind of very um, it's interesting to see how pointed this is, uh, and at the same time is obviously something that was popular with uh, white audiences that probably weren't at all sympathetic to uh, the native struggle at the time, and indeed were supporting governments that were were trying to uh, assimilate. We're trying to. Uh, I think the, uh, the 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 phrase that you hear for residential schools is try and kill the Indian in the child. Uh, so yeah, yeah. This this was this was uh, this was uh, really a good 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 little um, early example of 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 uh, of Canadian Canadian but native uh, literature of the time. You know, it's it definitely is using kind of a romantic. Uh, poetic romantic thing of a kind of a western western culture to tell their stories to tell these stories uh, but does it in kind of an entertaining way uh, yeah so I really enjoyed this that that is Legends of Vancouver by uh, E. Pauline Johnson and uh, you know yeah obviously I'm not the be-all and end-all being you know some white dude reading this I'll be interested to kind of go around and see what uh native authors have to say about uh, Pauline Johnson and her uh her her impact her impact but I have to say you know it is not a romantic story of a dying lost race no this is people now fighting for what's theirs in 1911 so this has been I mean, and I think that that's one of the things that that I, you know, as as we start to listen more and more uh, to uh, Native peoples in Canada, it's like we've always been fighting. You guys just haven't been fucking listening for the longest of time, and we're still, still, tr still learning to try, st still learning to, learning to try, learning to be, learning to hear is what's uh, hope, hopefully happening uh, in our modern state, but uh, it's still very imperfect. All right, I will leave it there. More videos later.